हेलो क्लास वेरी गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू आर डूइंग गुड हाउ वॉज योर डे हाउ वॉज एवरी थिंग हैड ए हार्ड डे और इजी डे Yeah, it's weekend. Weekend is always nice. Very good evening. Very good evening. Weekend is more relaxed. so class today we will be dealing with the applications of techniques that we have discussed so far in the field of uh, industry uh, environment health and plants agriculture how all these techniques of recombinant dna technology could be help helpful so we will deal with the applications today so let's start so applications of recombinant <coughs> recombinant dna technology in health agriculture environment and industry so first let's starts with the health part so application in health so recombinant dna technology wide spectrum in improving health treat a uh, defecated genes or introduce new one applications includes laboratory test uh, para perinatal diagnosis of genetic diseases so production of vaccine introduce live attenuated uh, acquired immunity or recombinant dna technology can be used to clone gene for protective antigen proteins hepatitis b vaccine hepatitis b vaccine influenza hiv mouth and foot diseases all these are possible uh, in this then how you can produce recombinant uh, hb vaccines so you can do it by producing hepatitis b virus uh, with the help of hepatitis b and bacterium you can create a clone with the bacterium or bacterium clone there and you can create a recombinant dna with the hb hb virus uh, having that gene then you introduce into the recombinant yeast cells then you put them in the fermentation shell fermentation tank then you have lot of hb antigens and then hence uh, you can ex extract and purify the uh, hb vaccines to produce hb vaccines at the end so they are commercial and pharmaceutical products so insulin uh, control glucose level in humans and by recombinant dna uh, done uh, cloning of human insulin gene and put into e coli so we can have insulin in that case which could be devoid of uh, getting products by animal slaughtering then human insulin production this could be done uh, with the help of human pancreas cells uh, uh this we have and human insulin could be get out from there the same technique like what we did before instead of uh, hepatitis b we are producing human insulin same way and you can also produce human growth hormones like almost 121 amino acids are there in the human uh, and they are around 2 to 115 Uh, kilo dalton or sorry dalton of molecular weight their role is into growth or regeneration or differentiations 
example is dwarfism treating by injecting these cells dwarfism could be treated uh, being short height height thing um, and then sequence for 24 amino acids uh, like high growth amino acids then we cleave them with the E. coli uh, one and then after cleaving that we ligate with the plasmid and put into the E. coli so that we can have production of recombinant human growth hormones like this HGH hormone they are interferons they are the group of proteins that interfere with the viral multiplications or replications by recombinant DNA uh, um, technique we are capable of making interferons an alpha component of which have role in curing lymphoma and malignant leukemia so all these are possible in case of uh, interferon then antibiotics so artificially prepared antibiotics are also available they denature harmful living pathogens penicillin in 19, uh, 1928 was produced like that so monoclonal antibodies are the specific protein antibody of immune system in the response to presence of uh, specific antigens monoclonal antibodies produced from single clone of antigens that's why monospecific in nature production through the hybridoma technology and applications are used for diagnosis of uh, diseases pregnancy treatment of cancer so all these are um, done under the monoclonal antibodies so so what you do you immunize with the antigen one mouse you isolate the immune cells afterwards then antibody forming cells uh, you extract them you make tumor cells you fuse them with the tumor cells to do produce a hybridoma and these hybridomas are screened for production of desired antibodies and antibody producing hybridomas are cloned further and clonal expansion as in we get the monoclonal antibodies we remove the viruses and then we have mainly your monoclonal antibodies out of a system then there are molecular diagnosis of diseases uh, infectious diseases uh, like diagnosis mainly depend upon the isolations and identification of pathogens which may take several days development of diagnostic kits to identify pathogenic organisms by knowing the organism specific DNA sequence has has uh, provided a rapid specific and correct diagnosis for AIDS cancer foot mouth disease tuberculosis even for the COVID test nowadays we are using the same RT-PCR uh, machines so you add your specimen into the specimen hole wait for five minutes then you have as positive and negative then uh, and you also have invalid results also then based on ELISA and PCRs uh, we can check we can uh, diagnose HIV patients we can have antibody test using a combined HIV proteins to measure the antibody in the body that proliferate uh, where there is a HIV infection is DNA test is done uh, to use the reverse transcriptase polymerase to detect the presence of HIV genetic material and this technique was developed uh, using recombinant DNA molecules analyzing the genome sequences then DNA fingerprinting it's done by uh, Dr. Alec Jeffries every per person has its own DNA fingerprint pattern which is different for the one person to another that's the basic principle of DNA fingerprinting so there is a possibility to alter these patterns but specific principle is still unknown fingerprints are detected on the basis of number of highly polymorphic genes that is VNTRs applications includes used in the criminal identifications for child parentage establishment and help for detection of uh, racial groups so in this case it's based on the southern blotting you have a blood sample then DNA is extracted then DNA is cut into fragments by restriction enzymes then we run them on the electrophoresis gel then we transfer them onto the nylon membrane like uh, uh, like southern blotting then DNA probes then radioactive DNA probe is prepared then they are bind to the membrane then excess DNA probe is washed off then extra film is placed then you have your bands on it you can do gene therapy in this switch uh, injects functional genes into cell to replace missing or defective genes in order to correct genetic disorders a gene that is inserted directly into cell does not function instead a carrier called vector is genetically engineered to deliver the gene so gene therapy may be done in vivo or ex vivo 
so health to uh, health risk are toxicity inflammation and cancer so direct delivery uh, looks like the therapeutic transgen is packaged into the delivery vehicle such as virus and injected into the patients then you have a target organ that is liver then so on the cell base uh, delivery you have a uh, therapeutic transgene and you take the stem cells from the human and then you mix them together and multiply them a lot then you readminister it into the patients so these are the two methods that you can use it for the gene therapy now how it could help in environment to clean up the environment so we can use recombinant dna technology in environment to clean up the environment uh, by the measure the presence of hazardous compounds uh, it helps in the measuring the uh, presence of hazardous compounds application of recombinant dna technology in environment by recombinant dna technology we can re uh, mediate the environmental pollutants some harmful chemicals that are not digested are degraded they are partially uh, degradable example tnt chemicals in this nitrogen is reacted with oxygen and superoxide is formed that is toxic knockout monohydro monodehydro ascorbate reductase genes that will create resistance tnt in that case you can have arsenic particles are very toxic that are present in the soil which are harmful to the plants so pa uh, pvac are three genes uh, are inserted into rhabdopsis and expression will give rise to generate tolerant plant to arsenic so in arbdopsis thaliana reductase enzyme is present reduce the arsenic and phytochelatins are present uh, to remove the arsenic from the root cells resist the movement of the arsenic in the root cells and phloem cells also waste products of agriculture have cellulose that do not easily decompose so by using recombinant technology we can convert cellulose into sugar uh for the breakdown of cellulose with the help of enzyme cellulase uh we incorporate them into vec vector first then after that in bacteria an expression of that enzyme will enhance the to degrade the waste that is contains the cellulose so by recombinant dna technology plastic degradation can be enhanced by genetically modified organisms degrade oil spills organic waste uh genetically modified strain of pseudomonas putida able to degrade oil spills chemicals in the oil spills used in the development of bind indicator as a bioluminescer which will give life to the which give give light to several chemical pollutants so they are being used to measure the presence of some hazardous chemicals in environment other genetic sensors that can be used to detect various chemicals contaminants are also undergoing trials so and include sensor that can be used to track how pollutants are naturally degrading in ground water for example mercury resistance uh, gene or toluene degradation gene mar and tol uh, is linked to the genes that code for bioluminescence within the living bacterial cells and the biosensor cells that signal extremely low level of inorganic mercury or toluene that are present in the contaminated waters and soils they emit visible light measured with the fiber optic fluorometers so this was done with the environment now comes the its application in agriculture recombinant dna technology can be inserted uh, can be used for insertion of genes into plants uh not only related to plant species but also unrelated species such as uh, microorganisms so they are used for production of transgenic plants with higher yield nutritional values increased resistance to stress and and, and pests development of plants having improved yield development of stress tolerant plants transgenic plant as a source of biopharmaceuticals so plant with improved yield so genes are inserted into plants to increase their yield so for from the japan national institute of agrobiological resources they added uh, maize photosynthesis genes to rice uh, 
and the increase yield was 30 percent because of that. Same way Mexican uh, scientists have genetically modified plants to secrete citric acid from their roots uh, which increased slightly the acidity, minerals bound to soil particles and released and which helps into available of these pro uh, nutrients to the plant. Plant resistance to environmental stress, so recombinant DNA technology used to develop crops that can tolerate uh, abiotic stresses and so they are genetically modified tomato and canola were grown uh, with a salt level tolerance of th uh, level of 300 percent greater than the normal. So 300 uh, percent tolerant salt created plants are being created which is then extremely uh, good for the plants. Herbicide resistance plants, Roundup is an uh, herbicide but it kills almost all species of plants using uh, recombinant DNA technology modified EPSP synthesis gene have been introduced into the crop plants and such as cotton and soya bean. Insect resistance plants, so cryogenes from a bacterium bacillus thuringiogenesis are isolated then plants is modified using the gene example cotton, rice, maize, potato, brinjal, cauliflower, cabbage with Bt genes have been produced with the help of that. And some disease resistance plant are also produced against diseases so tobacco was the first modified to produce resistance against tobacco mosaic virus. So here on the left tobacco mosaic virus resistance against it have been produced. So on the right hand side is the wild type of it. Production of biopharmaceuticals, recombinant DNA technology is used to produce plants that will generate seeds that expresses a de desired therapeutic proteins. The seed stock is used for producing desired proteins and the proteins can be extracted from seeds uh, in example in corn biopharmaceuticals are produced. Edible vaccines are coming up so genes encoding antigenic proteins can be isolated from the pathogens and expressed in plants uh, producing antigens can be eaten for vaccinations and immunizations. So in banana and tomato edible vaccines are made already. Production of secondary metabolites, so Arabidopsis plant is modified, polyhydroxybutyrate uh, is released by Arabidopsis, PHB is biodegradable plastic that has been excreted uh, for the cleaning the environment and, and also creating plants. So applications last not the least recombinant DNA technology in industry. So how industry recombinant DNA technology could be applicable. So traditionally, uh, traditionally industrial microbiology is merged with the molecular biology to yield improved recombinant processes for industrial production. Primary and secondary metabolites, protein, biopharmaceuticals, industrial enzymes are formed for industrial usage. Important primary metabolites like amino acids, nucleotides, vitamins, solvents and organic acids. The production is related to the energy production, substrate utilization is essential for the growth. So vitamin B12 is produced commercially by direct fermentations utilizing the fungus uh, Ashevia gosapi and vitamin B12 is produced by direct fermentation utilizing streptomyces species such as streptomyces griseus. Vitamin C is produced by utilizing gluconobacter oxidants and P carotene is produced by member, members of Canopyrsia family of phycomycetes. And amino acids are produced like glutamic acid, lysine, phenylalanine, valine uh, with the help of E. coli and using the cloning vector PBR322. So amino acids that are produced are L-glutamate and L-glycine mostly used as feed and additive additive thing. Then uh, production of golden rice technology. Uh, in this case, Irvinia bacteria and Daphlodiflis, uh, both uh, bacteria and plants are used uh, to create uh, new species. So these genes are along with the promoters are inserted into plasmids. So the both plasmids are in inserted into a new species of bacterium known as Agrobacterium tumefaciens. So the, these agrobacteria are then added to a petri dish containing rice embryos. As they infect the embryos, the, they transfer the genes, they encode the instructions for making beta-carotene. 
and then uh, from them pro vitamin a producing rice embryos are produced and which can lead to the production of locally important varieties so which will have pro vitamin a exceeding uh, rice so these are called as golden rice a very famous uh, while in the green revolution so enzymes are biologically molecules that catalyze increase the rates of chemical reactions recombinant enzymes plays a vital role in food industry amylases from fungi and plants for making high fructose corn syrup proteases are used used by the biscuits manufacturers to lower the protein level of the flour in that case now um to increase production of amylase production what you do is you have a double stranded plasmid and you cut it with a restriction endonuclease then you add the amylase coding dna and this been inserted in the plasmid leading the production of higher overexpressed mrna and hence overexpressed amylase at the end so chymosin uh, derived from the rennet used to manufacture cheese amino acid peptides that are used by used for the fermentations proteases split polysaccharides and proteins in the malt so there are various applications in the industry of various enzymes prochymosin genes are isolated from young calves and then they are transferred to the plasmid and this plasmid uh, is then introduced into the microorganisms on expression prochymosin is activated into chymosin producing 100% prochymosin first step is the milk clotting process in which cheese making uh, and k cyanolytic enzymes contribute to the micelle micelle precipitations because of its specificity towards k casein and it is the best enzyme for this purpose genes for chymosin isolated from cow dna and plasmid dna is cut open with restriction enzyme so you mix these two uh, chymosin and plasmid dna and you put this recombinant dna into bacteria and then you have bacterial chromosome inside that then chymosin protein is expressed in the bacterial cells and these then we isolate this chymosin protein and then isolated chymosin used to make cheese further so this is how you make artificial production of cheese in biofuel industry cellulose cellulase is used to break down cellulose into sugar that can be fermented in molecular biology restriction enzymes dna ligase polymerase is used to manipulate dna in genetic engineering important in pharmacology agriculture and medicines and they are used in forensic science further so that was it so this was about um, how recombinant dna technology could be helpful uh, in case of uh, in various field um, any question students later the pro project review or this what we studied any any so far questions um pages doesn't matter maybe uh, 
five to six pages will be enough or more than that because it, it's depend upon how many references you are writing how many uh, things you are making it so that matters a lot so I can share some slides with you on introduction to good scientific practice so maybe this could help you to write a good review so there are prominent cases of misconduct of research uh, which you do the bad research so good scientific practice have many uh, frequently asked questions does my PhD requires ethic approval this is for the students who is going for their master thesis or going for their PhD thesis uh, these are the questions that arrive in our mind do I need to store my original data how am I allowed to outlaws me from my data a sentence from another paper already plagiarism under which conditions can I use figures from another paper who qualify for the co-authorship on my paper whom should I contact if I suspect scientific misconduct so all these things are starting when you're starting your master thesis or even your PhD thesis so this is how we have uh, your uh, maintained your uh, responsibly uh, your appendix of this outline uh, we will discuss about the conduct of research a case study and misconduct in research such as fabrication falsification and plagiarism so shared values for responsible conduct of research so we have to maintain honesty accuracy efficiency and openness whatever you are doing uh, it has to be with honest uh, truthfully and uh, whatever you're doing accurately precisely efficient using the resources wisely and openness letting the fact speak for themselves avoid improper and bias in that case so general principles looks like a rule of good scientific practices are uh, obligations of scientific personnel to respect the rule of the good scientific practice practice measures scientific misconducts contact person in case of suspected scientific misconduct if anything goes wrong please contact uh, someone who could help you in that so section 2 uh, procedure in the case of suspected misconduct if there is misconducted has been done so how you can uh, how can you find it out you have to ask the university center and ask the investigating committee uh, all the people who are storing your data so they these people authorship could help you to help your things done to be clear out protection of human subject and local ethics committee respect for the persons participation must be voluntary uh, special consideration for the vulnerable subjects and it has to be beneficial uh, to the society and justice has to be given to your work what you are doing so welfare for the uh, laboratory animals as animal protection committee so whatever you are working uh, <clears throat> using the non uh, animal models such as microorganisms or cell culture techniques uh, reduction uh, has to be there using methods aim at reducing the number of animals refinement the elimination or reduction of unnecessary pain and distress to the animals so whenever you are doing with the animal work take care that you do the less harm to them use less animals and use vital results from the cell culture if possible uh, rules for uh, good practices for the uh, doctoral supervision so your doctoral students inform the supervisor immediately if there are any problem or unexpected results are there supervisors are confident in primary contact person of the doctoral can candidate thesis committee members are the first instance in, in case of conflict between doctoral student and supervisors University Board, uh, Graduate Committee, Ombuds Committee of the UMG. So this was, uh, we, were, we were told like, uh, so I'm just sharing my own experience. So data ownership, uh, university funding has to be taken care. Data collection has to be done with the hard copy evidence, electronic recording should be there. Uh, storage of lab notebooks in safe place, backup, uh, backup strategy for electronic files data retention uh, primary data that serve on the basis of publications on secure data storage devices in the department and primary data of a published results should be made free freely available rules for the good lab notebook so you have to maintain your lab book also when when you're working in a phd or in a master thesis notebook should be bound proper durable pages numbered notebook must remain on site 
should never be taken home for any purpose uh, should be easily legible and permanent blue or black ink never uh, ever erase or white out data pages must not be erased from the lab notebook so these things has to be taken care notebook should contain a running table of content entries for individual experiments date of entry descriptive title purpose methods results conclusions so all these things have to be maintained date of entry descriptive title purpose methods results and conclusion so this is how a lab book should look like uh, you should have a table of content and your title should be on top uh, plan of the task date name of the lab partner so all these things has to be taken care so this is some case studies of falsifying behaving badly in the science uh, some research data of the same so miss what kind of uh, research misconduct is done fabrication so you're making up of data of results falsifications uh, manipulating changing or omitting data or results plagiarism steal another person ideas results or words without giving appropriate credit sabotage adversely affecting the research activities of others violating the recognized rules of authorships so all these things are uh, matters in the in the in the case of research misconduct so research misconduct uh, in fabrication is making or inventing a data recording or reporting them so falsification is looks like somebody is not uh, with the this is a prime minister not with the people but they publish this picture that he is with the offenders also so this is how the fabrication is falsification is done so no what is the picture it was shown that with the just color balance and non linear adjustment they did that in that in last year same way with the western blot data people tend to adjust the gamma settings and increase the intensity of a protein so like this in the case originally it was this case 1 2 3 4 so there was no band at the band 3 so band 3 uh, band deleted in the lane 3 actually that was manipulated so this is how they manipulated band added in the lane 3 it was not before but they added the same band in the lane 3 uh, these are your uh, duplicated panels experimental a experimental b uh, these are the loading controls so so this is how uh, different results are fabricated so they they are just the intensity of single band so this band has been adjusted so that they could get the required results like this one manipulation is done there so images 1 to 3 shows sequentially more adjustment to contrast so this is the fourth image they they are moving uh, the things and at the end they they produce single band like this by just moving the contrast so this is also not justified so this is the original image with a lot of bands down but this is the manipulated image where they remove these bands so this is also people are doing in the field of science to publish data so this is original image uh, with the gold particles which are actually present in the original left have been enhanced in the manipulative image so in manipulative image they made them into more darker but originally they were very light so with with the manipulative image these are manipulative images cells from the various fields has been juxtaposed on a single image so these are these are the different cells in the different slides they and they merge them together to show results very nicely which is not good and plagiarism that you were talking about is to steal another person ideas results words without uh, giving appropriate credit so intellectual property plagiarism versus quotations so plagiarism uh, is the the practice of taking someone else work or ideas and passing the, uh, them off as own one own quotation mark should be used to indicate the exact words of another word paraphrasing summarizing a passage or rearranging the order of sentence changing uh, same of the words then the free use of uh, intellectual property rights uh, the free use of copyrighted work is permitted to bring out the new independent work but the new work must be itself 
uh, criteria of an intellectual create, creative achievement and plays the creative power of original text used to a certain extent. So DNA in eukaryotic cell is uh, secreted in the nucleus which occupies about 10% of cell volume. So this is the original statement and the person wrote like the DNA in eukaryotic cell is secreted in the nucleus which occupies about 10% of the total cell volume. So both statements are still similar. So this is plagiarism actually. So this will be uh, not acceptable. So something like in eukaryotic cells, cell contains the DNA uh, and makeups up to the approximately 10% uh, cell volume. So you can paraphrase the statement but not taking the whole statement like that and writing it. So that is uh, not uh, acceptable. So in, that was about how to write correct quotations. And... Uh, Ideas of sentence requiring credit. So direct quotations always credit the source when you are directly quoting another person. Assertions that are uh, arguable or fact that are not widely known. Judgments, opinions, claims of others, statistics, charts, tables, graphs from any source. Information or help provided by the friend, instructors or others. So these have to be maintained while you are doing so. Ideas of sentence. So common knowledge, facts available in the wide variety of resources. So please maintain that also. So that was about how you can uh, something do uh, in a good way your research, your studies. For you, okay, but uh, the more you get late, uh, the more you will be having your internship letter late. So it's up to you when you want to submit. So you can submit on thirty first. So your internship letter will be late then. So that's it for today's class, students. So any questions? Hello. What is this I feel? Eyelets? You mean eyelets? Because I e felt I never did that. But eyelets I did. Okay, eyelids is given for your uh, PR or permanent residence or for uh, admission in masters. So you have to, there will be four sections, uh, reading, writing, speaking and listening. So you have to maintain, you have to maintain these four sections. It's a basic English chapter. 
so you have to practice a lot of writing speaking and and everything and then you can give this exam so i'm giving this year maybe in november uh, for my pr let's see how it works out You need to have proper coaching first if possible otherwise you can prepare from home also if you need uh, any help with dialects you can ask me but i will say just go with the professional coaching first then give the exam if you are looking for uh, study abroad for your masters you're welcome Alerts is enough for Germany. Alerts is enough. Gray is not required. Gray is required for USA. So, if we have no further questions, I would like to end our session here today of proteomics. Um, it was a good time with all of you students and hope to see you somewhere in the future also. Yes, today was the last day. Or Thank you, thank you all. Thank you students, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe. Be the light. Spread the light. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, I will leave now. I think biochemistry is, is not coming up. It's being postponed for some reason. Please ask Vatsal sir about it or Shivani ma'am. Whether there will be biochemistry or not. They are saying they will be postponing it. I'm not sure. Otherwise, I would I will be the teacher of the same of biochemistry. So I will be teaching you if if we are allowed um, medicinal biochemistry 
and normal biochemistry also. So we will do study together. So there will be like chapters like carbohydrate metabolism, fatty acid metabolism, uh, liver metabolism, metabolism of muscles, but it seems it has been postponed for November. Schizophrenia syndrome, some virtual labs. some practicals bioinformatics ma'am will take it aramneet ma'am is there so she will take take care of that she has already created your your syllabus so she will be taking care of that Okay, student, bye-bye, take care, stay blessed.